So it's bear versus bull, blue versus red, Trump versus Kamala, whatever side you're on, let's be on the side of money and figure out how we can make it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're having a wonderful start to your weekend. Today, we're going to be talking about the election. We're going to be talking about the stock market. We're going to be talking about various things that's going on in the world and also how the Middle East is just starting off on a great note this week. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. We'll be giving you the levels for the week that you need to pay attention to to know if you're bullish or bearish and subsequently knowing what happened this week from the levels we gave out last week. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you know when those videos come out. We do this every Sunday where we give you these levels and it was very, very easy to understand where we need to be on, especially after Meta, Microsoft came in abysmal. And let's just pause for a second and talk about what Apple's going to do tonight, right? Because Apple is going to open, the market's going to open up at six o'clock tonight. And again, futures are not going to be the happiest camper because of several things. Number one, we don't really have any earnings on this week to really talk about. We do have a little bit, right? We got some uh, Lumen on Tuesday. We're going to be doing the election live stream. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that, uh, where you may get my Lumen reaction, depending on what it does. You got a bunch like Unity, uh, Rivian coming out on Thursday, DraftKings, right? None of the big hitters. But one of the big hitters was this Saturday with Berkshire Hathaway selling more Apple shares, which means that Warren Buffett is looking at this company and saying it's overvalued. It's basically going into an area where he's saying, I rather hold cash. A man that has spent 30 years of his life telling you cash is trash is holding $30 billion of cash, which is funny considering the Federal Reserve, he has more money in his bank account than the piggy bank of the Federal Reserve, double to be exact, with the reverse repo hitting 155000 This is the Fed's piggy bank to push liquidity into the market. It is drying up. And also, as the Fed cuts rates, right, cuts rates, and we see what is going on in the bond market. So as you can see here, we basically got rate hikes with the Federal Reserve. This is where Powell actually cut rates and the market must have heard hike instead of cut because the market has gone up 50 basis points since then. We've reverted all gains gone from basically July to August of mortgage rates because mortgage rates are right back down at 7%. They were there down briefly at 6.5 and I think you're actually gonna get another 50. Uh, contrary to popular belief, I do think the jobs report actually stimulates the uh, Fed to give you a 50 basis point hike. And I think the market can interpret it one of two ways. They can interpret it as bullish in the sense of like, yay, rate cuts or bearish because all is not well. This is an abysmal jobs report. We see manufacturing payrolls shrinking at the largest rate ever. Again, the non-farm payroll number is cooked by the government payrolls because as you can see here, government payrolls ticking up 10K. So if you basically subtract the increase in government payrolls because the government is just a hodgepodge of jobs, right? They can report whatever number they want and it's very hard to figure out if it's good or bad. And if you see not private non-farm payrolls, it's just abysmal, negative 20, destruction of jobs, and then non-farm payrolls is factored in with government. So again, it's skewed, it's skewed. They've skewed the numbers so, so much. I would say if you just take out all the government payrolls, you still get a negative number in non-farm. That is a true number. So we're getting negative reports. I was concerned when we were gonna start getting degradation of tens and fifties and double digits. We talked about it on the last one. And essentially this was a gigantic whiplash to one side because this is not normal. This is not normal from going from here to here. Right? Normally you get some steps in between, as we saw with inflation, as we saw with jobs, right? We, we see steps. This was just a hard rip to one side. And again, the market continues allowing the bulls to have enough rope to hang themselves. Because as we can see here with the net speculative position, 62,000, that means all the bears are gone. They're basically waiting. They're biding their time waiting or they've run out of money. One of two things has happened. And subsequently, the market is gonna take the most amount of money from the most amount of people in the shortest amount of time possible. And that is gonna be the bulls because you guys are serving yourself up to be taken advantage of. And we can simply jump over to the S&P just to see what happened this week and recapping it before we give you guys the new levels. But also uh, with this, this is basically super, super bearish, right? We do have a gap, right? Number one, so we have to be cautious about this week. We could definitely get a gap fill, especially at a Fed event, election, anything like that. But I would be suspecting, I'd be looking at the 50 day moving average as a key point of contention. The S&P broke down on a weekly basis and just shed, right? We, we consolidate in this region and then just loop right down to Armageddon. The NASDAQ similarly, right? We, we talked about this. It did have a little bit of a better week. Did not hit the 50 on the NASDAQ, but did actually look still bearish. It was bolstered by Amazon, right? Because Amazon pushed the tech sector up. 
even though a lot of people make the argument Amazon's not tech, still correlated to it because of heavily mount of the NASDAQ and also uh, Nvidia replacing in the Dow, Intel is gonna be a little bit interesting considering how the Dow is gonna play out. So we'll talk about the Dow in just a little bit, but simply another rotationary point on the NASDAQ. So let's jump into the levels for the S&P and then we'll be back for the NASDAQ levels after that and then go over some news catalysts that were, could be going on this week. So looking at the S&P, we got a, a quick overview of the levels that we wanna pay attention to. Obviously 583 for the break and fill to the upside. We got some corresponding lower levels. I'd definitely be looking bearish side of the market because we're below 575.56. That is this gap area here. As long as we're below this, I'd be looking at bearish trades. I would not necessarily be looking at bullish trades through the week, especially going to the, some of the volatility and some of the Israel conflict that we're gonna be talking about in just a moment. But simply put it, this is not looking great, right? Tech did not set us up for a successful week, especially with turmoil with the elections. It's gonna be very, very volatile. I think we're gonna see subdued trading Monday and Tuesday, but then again, maybe people have an assumption of how the election is gonna go and a certain result that's associated with it and they may transact in that way. So we have to be open to that. However, Buffett selling Apple is gonna put a tremendous amount of bearish tonation in the markets, but we have to see how it interprets, right? I can tell you the market's gonna take it bearish, but I wanna see what the market does. I wanna see what the market tells me rather than me telling the market. So simply again, 568.44, the 50 day moving average on the S&P is gonna be the line in the sand. We break that, all bets are off, but uh, we go full bear, right? That is a breakdown of structure. That is a breakdown of key support. And then we have to look where that 200 is sitting at. That 200 is sitting at very far below. We'd be looking at approximately a 6.32% correction beyond that. And also from all time highs, that would be a 8.91%. That'll be your standard. You get one correction per year. And we really haven't had that hard of a correction recently. So looking at this, I would not be surprised if we go down to 534, if we start breaking that 50 day moving average as we head into bearish intonation. I do believe that we're in store for more bearishness the rest of the year. Again, citing the next speculative positions being so slanted to one side, there's only one team to take money from. The liquidity crisis that's going on in the bond market, the election, again, they're publishing the real numbers as I call because they expect a certain candidate to win. You can probably figure out which one I'm talking about. But again, looking at this, I would still look at the charts. Regardless of everything of that, still look at the charts. If you break above 575.56, probably initiating debit uh, uh, call spreads because I wanna take advantage of that short-term transaction, not really take a lot of theta, and then writing it all the way to 580. I basically be looking to play this gap fill completely and then subsequently sitting back to see if we see 583 get broken. The reason I don't wanna transact in this region right here is because I don't necessarily know how everything is gonna go. I wanna see how price interacts with there. If we're going for blue sky breakout and continuation, then we'd be steadily above 583.32. And because we're above those levels, then I'm more confident to initiate positions and I can initiate with a larger capital, right? Then I'm more confident I can put more capital in and I pretty much know where my stop loss is versus trying to guess if we're gonna stay above 580, break above 583, then we subsequently come down to 575 and that's my break point. I'm just, I, I don't like the confusion there. So simply put, if we break above 575, we run into 580. If we break 583, we run and play the bullish side. If we break down below the 50 day moving average, we break the bearish side. And then in between, we see how the market's going depending on which momentous direction. And we play a small position depending on what that is. I'll keep you guys updated during the week with the update videos for that. Again, I can't predict exactly what's gonna happen on every single day. We'll give you update and make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel for that. Now, jumping over to the NASDAQ, the beautiful, beautiful, huge NASDAQ. It's going to be a fun one. So let's clean up the chart real quick for you guys and we'll dive right into it. So looking at the NASDAQ again, similar thoroughly to the S&P, but I did actually put two important levels. The true gap fill of 492 to 495 is what we're gonna be looking for because that's gonna be the re the optimal region to play bullish if we're taking any bullish trades. You enter 492, you write it up all the way to 495. That's pretty good. Now, once we get into this no man's land above 495 and 
tackling those again higher uh, all-time highs that's where i basically be looking to just kind of sit on your hands just to see if you get a reversal below 495. now subsequently if we're breaking down right we break down below we can even use the wick height right here as an indication of breaking down once we come back through that level as we broke above come back through i'd be looking at okay that's where we initiate the bearish position so if you're looking for a bearish position i want to break and then come back through that 492 level if we break below that 492 level that's when i want to initiate all the bearish positions about 25 percent going down to 483 once we get down to 483 that's where things get really interesting because now we're going to start questioning are we going to break the 50-day moving average we break 483 we break the 50-day moving average 481 that's a pretty quick break one to the next and subsequently that results in true bearishness in the market again with apple being on deck and more above it selling it it's gonna be very interesting to see if we don't just get a complete gap a gap and go down at 483.75 on open so make sure you guys are paying attention to the futures tonight to know what's going on to kind of preempt stuff and also some of the tensions that we're going to discuss in just a second so really the nasdaq s p play is very very similar they're both conjoining obviously nasdaq has a larger percentage so, oh if you're a more risky trader nasdaq's probably your choice or s p if you're less risk on mentality now talking about risk on mentality right let's talk about bitcoin right I know some of you basically said sell stocks and go into Bitcoin because of happening and all that. I don't understand Bitcoin enough, but I just look at the trend. And simply put, you're on a very, very fickle trend right now. And you're basically breaking it slash not breaking it. So really, I don't want to see 68,000 get printed. I don't want to see below the nine day moving average get printed on Bitcoin because that's simply, okay, every time we break down below it consistently, then it's a rough ride. So right now with Bitcoin, you're in this teeter-totter area. I would definitely be looking for 68 not to get printed. If it does, I'm looking back at 63 again, and then this whole momentum basically stalls. It's gonna be very interesting, especially with the election and especially with everything, as the dollar is gaining strength, because we haven't really covered a dollar on this channel a lot. The dollar looks to be gaining strength as things and global currency effects occur. So subsequently, we have to keep an eye on the dollar. Strengthening the dollar means weaker markets. How that affects Bitcoin, I personally don't know, but we have to keep an eye on Bitcoin from a technical perspective to understand, hey, if this thing starts breaking down to 64, is the momentum gonna keep pushing us higher? Or are we gonna, go, again, go through this cycle of breakdowns, right? I really said I want that 75 rally with Bitcoin, right? We got 74, but we didn't get 75. So is momentum stalling? Throw in the comment section below what you guys think. now. The next volatility indicator that will never give me the price I want for this, VIX being at a topping area, right? Subsequently, this is an area where we previously had topping on VIX. And now the question is, is this going to be a fake out or are we really going to start an increase in volatility at this point? VIX has been extremely elevated as we go in, very reminiscent of the 2016 market where it was up here at the 20s consistently. So are we seeing through a new phase of VIX right after the late big spike? Are we seeing basically an elation of VIX to basically where we're going to be in the 20s for quite a time? Throw it in the comment section as well below what you think. And again, some of the bigger news that's happening this week, again, with financial juice, we can see Iran, U.S. warns Iran, we won't be able to restrain Israel if you attack. As we covered in yesterday's video, Iran basically said, we're coming for you, Israel. And now the U.S. is basically saying, we're taking hands off. And they actually, Iran said, Israel and U.S. They're basically coming and come after both of us. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, Israel, Israel also has blow fired 100 projectiles at Israel on Sunday. So everything's uh, going hunky dory in the Middle East. Nothing to see here. You know, OPEC just pushing back uh, their cuts. Um, sorry, their increase of production on oil, and thus oil is going to probably grip everyone's face off. I did say that. Until oil breaks $66, stop being super bearish on it. I would not be surprised to see $72 a barrel crude tomorrow on open, especially with this bullish news. This is bullish for oil. We're going to have to see how it reacts because it's just massive, right? Oil has been in this wedge for quite some time, and that subsequently means when this thing breaks, it's going to be absolutely crazy. I'm hoping it breaks on the downside because I want cheap gas, right? I drive a nice Corvette. I want cheap gas, but then again, I also want to make money on oil. So it's like... Tomato, tomato, do you want to make money on Chevron and Exxon? And speaking of those two, they actually had earnings uh, this week. We can quickly jump to them. Again, it was one of those don't count it out till it's finally out. Uh, Chevron hitting up higher on earnings. Exxon kind of having a 
mixed review but closing lower so you kind of got a mix of bullish and bearish headwinds there so make sure you guys do a deeper dive on that i just wanted to share that with you because it was kind of interesting for me with that a uh, quick update on the inversion of the yield curve it has gone back down normal so we will not be doing loop-de-loops on this channel if you guys know exactly what that is thank you so much for watching us for the longest time i've been covering this thing for a while now for all those that are new to the channel um the yield curve is basically your doom and gloom and indicator as this thing pushes down uh uninverts right this is where mount everest is basically falling on you you don't want it to come back above the white line because that would mean more carnage basically you already got shot and now you don't want to get shot again essentially the gist of the story what you need to know is this push is creating craziness in the bond market crazy in the bond market means bad things for the stock market so that's all you really need to know. Again, you wanna keep this line above, below the white line. I'll keep you guys updated periodically on that as we keep you updated about their reverse repo, basically going into full carnage mode with it just going lower and lower and lower. Again, as the election heats up, right, RCP, we got still aggregate top battleground states. Again, Wisconsin, Michigan being skewed by certain polls, but it looks good for all the states across the board. So it's gonna be very interesting. Make sure you guys stay tuned for that election night stream. And now Fatal's gonna give you guys the biggest winners and losers, and I'll be back for the discussion part of the video. So we're in the final hours of the election. And well, this past week, the markets fell 1.83% on the five day and on the one day, it actually gained 0.41%. Taking a look at the next upcoming earnings, which this week was absolutely bonkers. A lot of companies went down, companies that we weren't expecting, for example, uh, Meta, right? That was really unprecedented. But this upcoming week for November 4th, we got on Monday companies like Palantir, Berkshire Hathaway, him's hers, which that's something going on with that one recently. We got Marriott, Digital Ocean, and a lot more. Then on Tuesday, which... Yeah, we have a lot here, but in reality, that doesn't really matter because the only thing that we care about is the election. But nonetheless, so we got SMCI, which, whoo, man, that one's been on the news recently. A lot of people are correlating that one to Enron. We got Devon uh, Company, Devon Corporation. We got ADM, which was another one that fell a decent amount a few months back, and a lot more. Wednesday, we got ARM, we got CVS, Qualcomm, Celsius, AMC, and more. Thursday, we got Moderna, Barrick, Block, Rivian, Datadog, Halliburton, MPW, Unity, DraftKings, and Vistra, and a lot more. And lastly, on Friday, if we're, we still have a country, we got the companies uh, Embraer, uh, Canopy Growth, Gray, Sony, and a lot more as well. When taking a look at the S&P 500 heat map, we can see that there's a lot of red here, a lot of deep red here too. And starting, of course, with the technology sector, the worst performer in this whole entire sector, it is SMCI losing, you guys thought I was joking, losing 44.89% on the week. This is insane. But we also have other companies, guys, for example, um, monolithic power systems down 15 and three quarters we got corvo losing 27.42 percent absolutely crazy amd 9.2 percent guys this sector was just catastrophic right yeah it was just complete chaos now we did have a couple of green ones and we can see here that the best performer was none other than the company wow completely in contrast with some of these right we got paycom softwares gaining 27.95 percent into now the communications sector we got the worst performer being none other than the company uh seems to be the company t-mobile losing 1.36 percent and the best performer it is none other than the company charter communications gaining 9.07 percent into now the consumer cyclicals we can see here that this is very mixed worst performer it is none other than see a lot of companies here that lost around like seven six percent or so but none other than the company guys uh, yeah, it definitely seems to be this one right here. Caesars Entertainment losing 11.23%. And the best performer, it is the company, uh, yeah, uh, Booking Holdings, gaining 9.23%. Into another consumer defensives, worst performer, very, very easy to find. Esther Lauder losing an astounding 23.69%. And the best performer, it is none other than the company, uh, Altria Group by the looks of it gaining 8.37 percent now the banks oh boy the banks we got the worst performer over here 
being none other than seems to be, yeah, seems to be the company Arc Capital Group losing 8.81%. And the best performer it is, let's see if I can actually find it real quick over here, seems to be Visa of all things, gaining 3.2% on the five day. Into now the healthcare. There's a lot of deep red and a lot of deep green over here. We got the worst performer being none other than the company. Uh, let's see, 9.6, 9.5, 9.81 does seem to be this one, guys. Davida Inc. losing 9.81%. And the best performer, actually really easy to find. Uh, it's not, you know, you got Insight Corp gaining 17%. But the best performer was the company Waters Corp gaining 19.31%. And now the industrials, a lot of red here. Worst performer, it is none other than the company. Wow, okay. Uh, Huntington Ingalls Industries losing 25.45%, guys. That is absolutely massive. And the best performer, it is none other than the company seems to be, guys, yeah, uh, Delta Airlines gaining 7.89%. Now, the real estate sector is actually crashing a whole lot. We got realty income. Realty income is actually sub 60 once again, guys. This is absolutely crazy. Wow, losing 4%. Maybe a good time to buy now, honestly. But nonetheless, so the worst performer in the whole entire sector. It is none other than the company. Uh, yeah, seems to be, guys, none other than this one. EQR, Equity Residential Properties, losing 7.43%. And the best performer, it is... Actually, sorry, no, it's actually BXP. Sorry, it's BXP losing 9%. Exactly. And the best performer, it's only a few of them. And it was Wall Tower gaining 2.36%. Now, the utility sector is also very, very red. I wasn't even, I was not expecting this, actually. I have not kept an eye on the utility sector. Worst performer here, it is none other than, well, found it. It is AES Corp losing 13.27%. And the best performer, only three gains. And those were GEV, XEL, and the best performer, Entergy? Entergy? Ian ETR gaining 7%. Now, the energy sector, a lot of red here as well. We got the worst performer being none other than, oh my goodness, let's see, that's four, 6.9%, which is comes from the company APA, right? So APA was the worst performer in the whole entire sector. As you guys can see, 6.97%. And the best performer, it is none other than only a few of them gained, but the best one was Conical Phillips getting 3.14% pie, basically. And lastly, basic materials. Worst performer was Newmont losing 6.53%. Uh, and the best performer, Vulcan Minerals gaining 5.4%. So as you guys can see, it's gonna be crazy. Guys, this is gonna be crazy. Elections Tuesday. Then following that, we got the FOMC. It, this is gonna be crazy. We're going to talk more about this when we talk about the debate, everything that happened this week, Warren Buffett selling. We got jobs numbers being complete disaster -fee. I just made that up, but I like the word disaster -fee. We'll see what happens with the election. But anyways, that pretty much does it. With that said, take it away, Mike. So obviously we're going to talk about the election, right? Because that's pretty much the only news bit on the week. But I do want to get your reaction to a couple things. Uh, number one is OPEC. Uh, saying uh, no production increase till the end of December because, you huh. know, just, you know, we like expensive oil. Can I blame them? Not really, but end of December or the end of the year, basically. So, I mean, just quite in line with uh, everything. Everything co coincides with the election. Yeah. I don't know if you could easily well, tell that, but everything coincides with the election. <laughs> I wouldn't say OPEC really. I, I, I've been saying this that OPEC is going to keep kicking the can down the road on production increases till every time oil sees a six in front of it, it's like, no, we're not, we're not cutting production. We're not cutting production. We want, we want 70 or higher oil. And every time that oil dips down, OPEC comes and rescues it because again, we're not increasing production, you mean? Yeah, we're not increasing, which is again, everyone treats it as bullish for OPEC, right? So either OPEC does cuts or OPEC does no production increase. Both of them are have bullish um, intonations, right? Because the market is pricing in um, X amount of supply and they're like, okay, supply is gonna go up. So therefore same demand, lower supply, lower price. Now it's okay. like, no, same supply, same demand. Okay, price go back up. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't even aware about the whole OPEC thing. I, I really, really wasn't so. Yeah, I haven't, really have I haven't much been to following say on that. it uh, too closely. I just saw it in the news. 
because I did see this other thing. Uh, Israel, Hezbollah fires 100 projectiles at Israel on Sunday. You know, got, got to love them, uh, uh, them uh, Hezbollahs uh, going at it on a Sunday. You know, <laughs> got to love goodness. it. Yeah, yeah. No, that now, is, um, I mean, here's the thing. I don't think none of that will move the market. But something that will move the market, aside from the election, hold on. is the article that no, you no, did. No, 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 no. There's one more thing. Slow down, Senpai. Oh, there's one more thing. Um, U.S. warns Iran, we won't be able to restrain Israel if you attack. And, and Iran also said, uh, we're coming after you. I'm trying Ooh. to find it where it is. Because uh, I covered in the video on Iran basically said, we're coming after you. Uh, okay. ah, uh, Iraq oil minister. Uh, nope, that's uh, oil production. Anyway, it was somewhere in here uh, that basically Iran said we're coming for you, Israel, and you, U.S. They called out the oh, U.S. Lovely. this time. All of the U.S. this time. Huh? Yeah. If only there was somebody that, uh, I don't know, had the strength to go against them. But I don't know of any man that could possibly do nah, that. I know. Well, stop, stop with your blasphemy. Uh, you know also what's other blasphemy in the markets is what? the fear and greed being a neutral. You know, just perfectly mm -hmm. set up for a Tuesday. It's like 50-50. Wow, dude. That is absolutely crazy. But I mean, most likely we are going to get a pretty big red day uh, tomorrow on Monday. Yes. Just because of the, yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's that's why right there, right? I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly happy in the sense of like, he trimmed Bank of America, so I wasn't completely wrong. He trimmed a little bit. He did not cut what I thought he was going to cut when he cut Apple down another quarter, right? Another total quarter. So he's basically sold three quarters of his entire Apple stake. And I question, is it now the largest holdings for him? Because it's getting to the point where it's like competing with Bank of America on holding size. It's true. It's true. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I don't know. But I saw this and I'm just like, how much in how many? I think he has like three hundred and fifty billion dollars yes. in cash right he, now. The irony. The irony is he has more money in his piggy bank than the Federal Reserve in their piggy bank. Because this thing is collapsing. It is collapsing. The reverse repo is completely going to hell in a handbasket. And I'm, so, so what's funny is we talked about jobs, right? Job numbers, we, me and you were both speculating that this thing would be like, you know, we go to 100 and then we go to like 50, right? Historically looking at 08, looking at dot com where it was like dot, 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 dot. None of us in our wildest dreams would have said Dude, you dot, dot. <laughs> You showed me, you sent it to me on Friday and I was busy on Friday, but you sent this to me on Friday and you were just like 12,000. I'm just like, did he have a typo? Did he nope. put like a one or a two in there? <laughs> and then, and then I looked it up myself and I'm just like, it no, actually no, no, no. is 12,000. This is the rig. Jay Bravo said this the best. And this is the number they're going to revise down lower. Let By that the way, sink speaking in. Speaking of revisions, hang on a minute. Speaking of revisions. The previous one got revised, just like I said, from 254 down to what is that, 223? Yeah, 223, and the other one got revised from 223 to 192. So it's like, wow. but hold on. This is the numbers they're going to revise down the road. Yep. Right, right. We're, so it's not even, we're not even jumping off the good part, right? Like you're already down in, the, in purgatory and you're just going to go lower. Like you're heading to hell at this point. And I'm just like, in my wildest dreams, I did not expect this. On top of reverse repo basically being like, yeah, um, no one wants to hold bonds. Like just cratering into Tuesday. And I've been hearing murmurings of the spreads going to historical uh, levels to the point where we've never seen spreads go this far where auctions are settling and where they're being act uh, like what are they're ending. And mm -hmm. the spread is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the reverse repo as markets are expecting the Fed to cut rates again. But I think the market actually heard the opposite. They heard rate cut equals rate hike because we went up 50 basis points on the more on mortgage rates since the, on Fed the 10 cut, year on yeah, the 10, on the 10 year, year. Yeah. since we cut rates. We've gone Dude. up 10, uh, sorry, 50 basis points. So the question is, do you think they're going to give I, I think there's going to be a cut, right? But what do you do you think it's going to be 25 or 50? Well, first of all, I, I sorry, I, I have to say something first, and that is the fact that I was wrong. Uh, you were right because I when they when they cut that fifty. Listen, I'm okay with being wrong. I'm perfectly <laughs> fine with it. I'm willing to say it. But when they when they cut that fifty, I was just like, the market's gonna go up right now because you know that, that's essentially what they wanted. 
Man, while I was doing that stream, when they did that 50, the first the 10 year was you know, just like, da, 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 da. the market, the market just went flat. It yeah. went flat and maybe a, a little bit down and, and, I'm, and I'm like streaming. And all, I, and all I'm saying is this is not the reaction that I was expecting. Yeah. It's like and, the, um, it's like, it's like everyone's so hyped up for the news, right? The rumor, the buy the rumor, buy the rumor, buy the rumor. And then they get the, they get the rumor to be true. And it's like, uh, uh, yeah, it's like uh, the actual okay. implications the actual implications as to what these cuts actually mean. So now here's the question. So when, when, when the, when the government, when the BLS put up the 254,000 jobs numbers last month, yep. I put out a short saying who is correct here because the Fed's saying that the labor market needs help, but clearly the BLS government is... saying, yeah, the, the government saying that everything is hunky dory. Well, I think we just found out who was correct. Yeah, but it also goes back to like going back to rate cuts real quick. Do you think it's fifty or twenty five? Um, I think it's gonna be. I, I think it's gonna be a twenty five. I think it's gonna be fifty. I think they they're gonna look at these job numbers. They're gonna see this, and we went from two hundred to one hundred and twenty ish, right? And the Fed was freaking the hell out. This is ten times worse. And you got a 50 with that. So there's no, in my mind, it's like A plus B equals C last time. Why is A but, plus B not equal C now? But, but here's the reason why, you know what? You know what? It may actually be the case that they actually do 50. Because what has been their narrative recently? And that is we are switching from interest rates to now labor market. Yep. There it is. And if they there follow it is right their, there, right? And if they follow their assessment of that, on top of if we look at inflation it's like it, it, it's not you're not winning you're not winning 2.7 to 2.7 is not conquering inflation uh not even your rec your fancy pc metric 2.3 to 2.1 congratulations you finally got to two on something core is still above cpi is still above shelter at five percent pc at 2.7 it's not acceptable results to the Fed, but yet they're Correct. saying it's acceptable, right? Through the actions of not focusing on it. And the, the thing is the bond market's looking at everyone being like, have you all lost your goddamn minds? It's insane. And let's, actually, uh, and let's actually hop into, which by the way, this is a great segue, into the actual catalyst of all of this. Because on Tuesday, obviously it's the election. Oh yeah. And, um, Things have been going off. Things that, these past 24 hours have just been crazy. But if you could go back to the economic calendar a second, yeah. what have we said? What have we said for the past six months that if Trump were to get elected, the numbers are going to start coming out and the real, and not the fake ones, but the real ones. And look at what we just got. 12,000 jobs bade in the month of October. So really? when are we gonna get? When are we gonna get the revision of a million less? Like so on yep. January what twentieth he gets a, uh, he gets inaugurated. It's like revision of the job numbers. January sixth. Was it January sixth? January sixth. January sixth. January January is it January sixth? Yes. Or is that the it's January sixth? Yeah. It's okay. January sixth. Gotcha. It's January sixth. So and let me hang on. Let me also let me also add another little piece of um, another another strawberry or cherry to the end All of right. that cake. Um, I don't know if you were here for this. Maybe you were, but it was during a live stream. I, th I think you were. Guess who Trump wants to appoint for the next Fed chair? Oh, yeah. You showed me this. You showed me this during a live stream. I was watching it, I think. And then I Do hopped on. It, I don't know her name, but I know you her know policy. Her I know her policy, which Go. is zero percent inflation being real. It's like it, it's like true, true, true stable prices, right? And... Me and you both know that would require at least another 500 basis points of hikes easily yeah. to crush yeah. shelter. Shelter yeah. is the thorough, because you know, Trump could actually solve the oil problem by basically being drill, baby, drill and bankrupt every other company out there, right? Yep. Bank, just bankrupt yep. the Saudis, bankrupt the Iranians. But that's not bankrupt. gonna fix housing though. No, the problem with housing is, well, here, here's like, here's a conundrum, right? Because like the Fed, the logic of the Fed is if you institute all his policies, it'd be inflationary because people are going to have more money to spend. Not that there's going to be more, the, the same amount of money that's in the system now, is just going to be transferred from one individual to another. So it, it, it equals nothing. The same amount. 
the yeah. money supply in the system remains the same. Yeah. It's just Keynesian economics believes, no, it's the, the velocity of money, when in no. reality, that's not what inflation means. Well, if that was true, right? If that was true, 2016 to 2018 was one of the fastest velocity of monies ever. And inflation mm -hmm. was going deflationary. Like we hit yeah. negative numbers. And Did we really? I don't know about that, but- we, I, For month over month, we hit negative numbers at some point. It was like 0.1, right? Like negative point. So like small decrease, but in within the statistical noise, right? But we can clearly say there was 0% inflation, true stable right. prices. And people, I mean, people are getting money left and damn right. You got the tax cuts, they had more money in their accounts, they had more savings, they had, the, like, if you look at the amount of debt to savings right now in the economy, it's a freaking train wreck. Yeah, and it it really it's is. like, and then you look at, and people are like, oh, we're not in a bubble. Um, Sidetracking real quick to uh, this piece of garbage over here, oh. uh, SMCI. Oh. Um, hey, Dude, how do you like your you 40 percent haircut? Have you seen the memes? No, I have not. I just it's know the guy, that it's the guy. It's the guy taking off the glasses. Oh, and seeing SMCI, <laughs> and then putting on the glasses, and it says Enron. Oh, I, I was going to say, and guess which one's next? Get, get, guess which one's next? I have to guess on video. Yes, that would that would definitely next. Nvidia, you will be next. I I can pretty much guarantee you you will be next because let's just look at a monthly graph of this thing, right? I'm gonna pull up a monthly graph and then I'm gonna switch to SMCI. And you tell me what phase we're on. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. this I mean, is this is where you are with you... Nvidia, and then literally. So I would argue Nvidia is a little bit of a different case um, because I'll Nvidia actually does have pretty good fundamentals. But I see your point from a from a yeah. chart perspective and an exponential perspective. And yes, yes, it, it does look very very similar. Yeah. So like, um, with with that right, like we also mentioned about housing as we we're getting more housing data, and it's also quite interesting with housing right now because. The data is still showing houses are not really decreasing, right? And this is where everyone like on the housing markets, like housing crash, they're like, if I see one more housing crash video, I think I'm gonna throw up. Because I'm like, this low is higher, oh sorry, this low is higher than this low. So it's like, right. in what freaking universe am I basically living in that people are saying housing crash? Now, we had a comment about like, we hope this happens with housing. And I'm like, I could see 20, 30%. I don't see 50% because there's not a lot of, there's still a lot of equity inside the markets. And also Correct. with Trump's policies, there people are gonna have a lot of money to sustain themselves. The problem is com like, you've ki like, they're gonna make it so that it's a debt crisis, right? They, they're pulling the trigger on the debt crisis. And the thing is like, you're also gonna get a person that's gonna go into office with two weeks to negotiate the debt ceiling that is hell bent on basically saying, uh, you, you know what yourself, because yep. it's going to oh, be after great. Inauguration. After, yeah, inauguration, after inauguration. After right? inauguration, two weeks. They have two after. weeks. And February 2nd or 3rd, right? Right oh. when I come back from vacation, it's like, oh, oh, I, oh, oh, on birthday your birthday. Gift. Yeah, your birthday, birthday gift. gift. Uh, early birthday gift. Early uh, birthday gift. I don't know the day of, right? Technically, or yeah, That's around nice. that. I'm the sixth, so no. Oh yeah, but it literally, I come back from vacation and I'm like, ah, that's ceiling negotiation. It's like, it's gonna be great, right? And then also with Elon talking about, I don't know if you've seen some of these shorts where he's like uh, talking about housing. He, he was talking about housing recently, how a government program put $42 billion and got 0% returns. And he's like, the budget of that program should be zero. I'm Negative like, actually, it should, it, should, it should return that money back. Yeah, it's like, it's like, as we can get a zero now, right? But it's like, there's so much opportunity in the government and the irresponsible spending of everything. And you could fix a lot of the stuff. The problem is that these just jokers aren't gonna let you fix it because no one wants to hold your debt. P case mm -hmm. in point, no one wants to hold your debt because they don't believe you're gonna pay it back. Correct. So Correct. it's gonna be insane. It's gonna be insane. And uh, the, the election, dude, I am, I am. It's gonna be. I'm it's looking be forward to you losing our bet, by the way. Uh huh. Yep. Okay, so for anybody who doesn't know, Mike and I apparently have a bet going on right now. Yep. Uh, would you like to? Yeah. So Mr. Black Pill over here uh, no, says not yes. Black pill. Yes. Okay. Throw in the comment section below, guys. Who's white pill? Who's black pill? And then talk about Pennsylvania specifically, right? Because he lives in PA, and I've been telling him that it's not going to be a close race. He's telling me that it's going to be a close race. What we define as a close race is two pro uh, more than two points, and I'm Less basically than two yeah. So I'm basically saying. 
if Trump wins by, let's say, 52 to 48, if that's the margin of victory in Pennsylvania, he owes me a 20-year-old bottle of scotch. So he doesn't know what he real well, he doesn't know what he signed up for yet. I don't. But but I'm gonna enjoy on Wednesday what we probably do a video or a stream or whatever, uh, gloating in his face about it. And then we also I don't know do we have a better in Virginia yet of red or blue? No no because I I honestly believe well I I I I, I think Virginia has a 51 percent chance of going red. Okay. Um, but that's about it. Like so, the fact oh, that there is so, so, the fact that so all the ballots are so paper you're ballots. Saying, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. The, the fact that all the, the fact that all the ballots are paper ballots and the fact that SCOTUS just said you can purge the voter rolls, I'm like, perfect. That gives it a slight edge, but fifty one I don't consider it more than fifty one percent though. Okay. So what do you think is gonna be national? What do you think that the national poll is gonna be? No no dude. Because right now it's know. saying at plus so I was watching Fox this morning, just, you know, I was on, on make while I was cooking and they have a dead heat. And also you mentioned about to me about how all the polls magically, right? Actually, let's go back to polls to the aggregate. And I want to show like the Wisconsin thing. If we look at like CNN, right? Skewing the aggregate and you got a New York Times skewing the aggregate. I'm like, this Last is statistically night, not right. Last night we got a poll from Steve. Stella, Stella from Iowa saying that oh, Kamala Harris was up, yeah, was up three, completely erasing everything when, from I was Emerson that was saying Trump was up by 10 and a half. Well, technically, both of them are statistical outliers, right? If you consider it. But like, when's the last time Iowa, you said Iowa? Iowa. Mm -hmm. Let's see, when it went uh, Democratic. I, I know it, I know I didn't do it in 2016, maybe 2012, if I had to guess. Uh, let's see. Uh, but regardless, it though. literally. So the last time I went Democratic was in 2012. So when oh, Republican okay, in 2016 go. and 2020. So when obviously Obama versus Romney, Obama versus McCain. I can see that considering that was basically the worst choice in the universe. But yep. it it's it, yep. yeah. So basically, yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> 10 point 10 points it's like what they're trying to do is they're trying to demotivate people to basically say don't go out and vote and i'm I like agree. i'm like okay you i fully agree but here's my argument for everyone right what's the one thing that's going to happen on tuesday someone's going to get out of bed most people don't cook themselves right they usually go out to eat or they get something on the way to work they get coffee so let's say you're going to the polling place and you stop at a gas station and get a snack and you're gonna pay thirteen dollars for that snack when four years ago you were paying five, well, and that's gonna be. Ago, but yeah, yeah. But essentially, that is the thing you're gonna remember. Mm -hmm. That 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 is gonna be the thing that's gonna be grilled into your brain. You're gonna fill up your gas tank on Tuesday, right? Anyone that fills up their gas tank on Tuesday and sees the prices and remembers ninety nine cent freaking gas. I wouldn't go that far, but in South Carolina it was. But I'm saying like the Delta, right? The Delta of like double the gas price of wherever you were correspondingly, right? In California, $7 gas versus $4 gas. In Pennsylvania, uh, $4 versus $2, right? It's just yeah. this insane shell shock. And then you're gonna go, and then you're gonna vote. And then you're gonna basically say, do I want more of this or none of this? It, it's I just hope, I just, guys, no matter what happens, just please go out and vote. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you guys know that, you guys know that we support Trump uh, not because he's a saint, not because he's Jesus Christ incarnate. He's not. He's a flawed man. But you know who also was flawed? Every single person that God used in scripture. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you want to talk about flawed? Talk about Solomon having 700 wives and 300 concubines, all right? Yeah. But it's so, like with Harris, Everybody's right? flawed. With Harris and Biden. It's like, it, the, it's the equivalent of playing Russian roulette in six chambers and you load five bullets. Right. And you're praying to God that it's basically not gonna, it's gonna land on that one chamber. Everything's gonna be hunky dory. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll take my, that. I'll take my odds with the uh, possibly dud hand grenade. Right. So, and Trump, he has decent policies. He does. He does. And not to mention, we do have a history of him. No new wars in 2016. You know, walking into North Korea, the Abraham Accords, low, 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 um, you know, built, drilled, drill, baby drill. Low, Do you guys want to pay more taxes? Gas prices, everything. 
It's like, do you guys want to pay more taxes? Tax cuts elapsed in 2025. So guess yep. what? You want to pay more in taxes or you want to pay less in taxes? Yep. Or just for and, the sheer hell of it, do you want to see and, the greatest troll ever? And to all investors out there, unless you want to pay a 25% unrealized capital gains tax and a 40% realized, uh, realized capital gains tax, I highly suggest you vote for Trump. Just a no, suggestion. vote for your Not best interests. To do. Suggestion. Vote for your best interests. And being taxed is not in your best interest. Correct. So, oh. Guys, I think that'll pretty much do it. Again, we are going to be live streaming, or I'm gonna be live streaming, uh, which I'm pretty sure gonna be in, you're gonna be as part of this too, right? Yeah. yeah. I won't stay probably the whole way because I gotta go to work on Wednesday, but. Fair yeah. enough. So uh, on Tuesday at 9 p.m., basically after all the polls close, because I don't want, you know, we want everybody to watch after they already voted. Go and vote, please. Drag as many people as, as you can um, to the polls with you. And I really do hope that everybody, everybody at least votes for Trump, man, because this is ridiculous. Again, I'm not telling anybody what to do. I'm just saying I would hope so. Because yep. at the end of that, because I honestly believe that this is the last chance that we got. I honestly do. Right. So, Mike. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the Fear and Greed Index to know where this is going to go. Throw it in the comment section below what you guys think it's going to land at. See you guys a Tuesday for the election live stream where history will be made. And hopefully we'll be waking up to a new dawn on the country rather than purgatory. So again, thank, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.